Welcome aboard. I'm your conductor, Eddie Muller. We're about to embark on another excursion through Noir Alley, TCM's weekly journey to the wrong side of the cinematic track. This week, we've got Crack Up, a 1946 mystery thriller from RKO. The title refers to a train wreck that early on befalls our hero, played by Pat O'Brien. It also refers to O'Brien's deteriorating mental state after no one backs up his story of the fateful accident. Now, it's an intriguing twist on a plot device familiar to films of this era. Only instead of the hero losing his memory, this time it's everyone else who seems to suffer from collective amnesia. And that's not the only unusual twist in the film. In a genre dominated by cops, crooks, detectives, and insurance investigators, the protagonist of today's story is an art curator at a big city museum, a profession that gives the writers plenty of room to take jabs at the pretentiousness of contemporary art, a cynical attitude that populist Hollywood always copped when dealing with any modern art that veered from traditional representational works into various isms, expressionism, impressionism, cubism, surrealism. What do you think of this? <laughs> It's especially amusing and ironic to find such sneering disdain in a movie that itself was part of a genuine artistic movement, film noir, which appropriated a few of these isms into its visual look and stylized storytelling. Director of photography Robert DeGrasse does a super job evoking the spooky nocturnal world of the mythical big city, an essential aspect of noir style. But unlike a lot of hardcore noir stories that follow a man's dangerous plunge into fear and paranoia, Crack Up is more amusing than dreadful. And that has a lot to do with its source material, a longish short story by Frederick Brown, a writer of great imagination, cleverness, and humor. Madman's Holiday was written in 1943, and like much of his crime fiction, it took fanciful leaps of logic, more typically found in speculative science fiction, another genre in which Brown was innovative and prolific. He was a writer's writer, with more well-known authors like Robert Heinlein, Philip K. Dick, Stephen King, and Neil Gaiman citing him as an important influence. Brown wouldn't write his first novel until 1947, the year after Crack Up was released. The fabulous clip joint would win the Edgar Award for best first mystery novel, and Brown would go on to write many more works of mystery and suspense, a number of which featured an orphan named Ed Hunter, who solved crimes with his uncle Ambrose, a former private eye turned carnival roustabout. One of those books is titled Mrs. Murphy's Underpants, which despite being stuffed with twists and suspense, shows by its title alone how lightly Brown took the genre, and himself. Here's a Frederick Brown quote that reveals a lot about his feelings toward the craft. There are no rules. You can write a story, if you wish, with no conflict, no suspense, no beginning, middle, or end. Of course, you have to be regarded as a genius to get away with it. And that's the hard part, convincing everybody that you're a genius. Now, should you want to read Madman's Holiday to compare it to the finished film, it's going to cost you. The only copies around are going for $500 or more on the Internet, an indication of the cult status Frederick Brown has achieved. Now, the final script of Crack Up is by another reliable writer, John Paxton, who'd hit the deck running in Hollywood with his 1944 adaptation of Raymond Chandler's Farewell, My Lovely, retitled Murder, My Sweet. In rapid succession, he wrote the scripts for Cornered, Crack Up, So Well Remembered, and Crossfire, which earned him an Academy Award nomination in 1947. Now, although his pace slowed down in the 50s, Paxton still wrote some memorable films, 14 Hours, The Wild One, The Cobweb, and On the Beach. Pat O'Brien only made two pictures in 1946, this and a little scene crime caper called Perilous Holiday not to be confused with Madman's Holiday. Things had slowed down considerably for the guy who once was Hollywood's go-to Irishman, busting out with a star-making performance as Hildy Johnson in 1931's The Front Page. O'Brien was playing cop 
con men and clerics at a clip of about six pictures per year in the 1930s, making him one of America's most bankable movie stars. But now, at age 47, O'Brien was trying to hang on in the wave of emerging post-war leading men. And he would hang on, all the way up to ragtime in 1981, where he performed beside his best pal, Jimmy Cagney, in what would be the final movie for both actors. They had first appeared together in 1934's Here Comes the Navy and made eight pictures together in their heyday, including the aptly named The Irish in Us. O'Brien's co-star here, Claire Trevor, earned her Venetian blind stripes playing the femme fatale in Murder, My Sweet. And she'd go on to become one of the most active actresses in the genre, starring in classics such as Born to Kill, Raw Deal, and Key Largo, which earned her an Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. What's your racket, girlie? What do you do for a living? I'm out of my head. I drive around in cars picking up psychopathic killers. If we played a game today where we took a drink, Every time Trevor swans into a scene in a spectacular new outfit, complete with elaborate headdress, we'd be too drunk to make it to the film's surprising climax. Co-starring Herbert Marshall, Wallace Ford, and Ray Collins, and directed by Irving Reese, from RKO Radio Pictures in 1946, here is Crack Up. 